Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. The weather today is beautiful because of the heavy rain from last night till today and the roads are wet but I arrived here safely to do this story for you. NTUC Enterprise becoming bigger and bigger and they are planning to buy over Kopitiam. You know, any merger is a good idea. However, they must remember the philosophy of why the merger. It should be a case of I win, you win, together we win again. But if it's a case of I win and you lose, then it's a bad merger. NTUC FairPrice was started to combine NTUC Welcome, PIEU and Silo. These were all unions, so they form a big cooperative and it's very good. It turned out to be very good. Not because my husband was the first CEO, but because they really helped the people at the bottom uh, who find it hard to catch up with the cost of living. However, now they have become so big that they have become a bully. You know why? They bully our farmers. They bring in imported vegetables which you know, we all wonder whether it's safe. And then they force our own chicken and egg farmers to sell to them cheap. You know, they should support our Singapore safe farmers. Land here is expensive, labor is expensive, and it's difficult to cope with that kind of business in Singapore. But our food growers are definitely very needed for our country because other countries may not want to sell to us in the future. You know, in America, the American military and navy, I believe, only use their homegrown produce. And Singapore should follow that so that our farmers get a better price for their safer grown foods. And instead of being tortured by NTUC fair price to lower their price, and to support their promotions. I think that is wrong. So we must be very careful, go back to the drawing board. Why are you becoming bigger and stronger? Because you want to bully others or because you want to be a protector? I'm really impressed with our Prime Minister. He's beginning to understand that there is something wrong with our IT systems, with our organizations, etc. You know, Prime Minister, please get down to the ground and see what is happening. It starts with just good bloody service. I went to SLA the other day because I had to pay uh, some fees and finally they are getting it. It is about good quality service because you are our civil servants and you should provide us with service. I, I suppose many of you know I run an F&B business on my farm. So I'm happy to read that this uh, Mr. Chi Hong uh, Tat is going to make applying for F&B licenses become simpler, faster and cheaper. You know, from 845 data fields to fill in across many government agencies, he's going to reduce it to 200 now and further to 100. And he's also going to reduce the fees by $500 and from 42 days to 28 days. It's a good improvement, but I think, Mr. Chi Hong Tat, why don't you start uh, F&B business, go to the different agencies and fill up the form yourself and try to do it within one day or two days. That will be ideal. Letters recall over high levels of pesticides. I'm shocked that this kind of thing can happen. I thought the AVA checks every shipment that comes in. But really, how much do they check? And how did this end up being sold in the supermarket before it was found out? I think AVA should seriously go back to the drawing board and look at what their role is and how much of imported items are checked at what point. I always spend time to read Chua Mui Hong's articles because I think she writes well. 
she wrote about tackling the class divide. We, the people, also matter. And she asked a question which got her thinking, which also got me thinking. And the question is, how did we become a society that looks down on people for the work they do or the grades they get? It's very simple, Mui Hong. We do not promote the old values of honesty, of goodness, and of having a conscience. We have developed this culture of looking down on people who do blue-collared work. In white countries, people who do blue-collared work are paid expensive hourly rates, so they are respected, right? And that is what we have to promote, not what you are suggesting. How can we overcome this? In a word, respect. Look, it's not about respect. People only respect people who earn good salaries. As long as people look down at people who earn low salaries, we will always have this terrible class divide. 7 million disbursed by ST fund in first 9 months of 2018. More seniors seeking financial aid. More households receiving long-term financial assistance uh, and so forth and so forth. 7 million disbursed to 10,000 kids is only $700. We are the richest country in the world, yes? So how come we have so many financially disadvantaged children? One of the papers say is 16,000. $700 divided by 12 is what, $60 a month? You know, kids don't only need pocket money for school. Kids need to eat every day at home, Kids need shoes, kids need clothes, kids need etc, etc. So if their parents can't even give them pocket money, I wonder how do they live? So let's really look at what is the inherent problem and find a good answer instead of this patching up of always giving financial aid but not getting to the root of the problem. As the country becomes richer and richer and we are the richest country in the world, why is it we have so many people who are still financially disadvantaged? HDB ethnic quota, tough sell for owners of minority race. No plans for government to buy back flats hit by ethnic quotas. What is ethnic quota and why only in HDB? You mean only the poor create enclaves and ghettos? All Indians and Chinese and white people living in an expensive condo doesn't create an enclave or a ghetto. I find that offensive. What is a minority race? You mean the white people who are minority in this country is not a minority race, right? Why do we keep harping on the ethnic quota that affects only Indians and Malays? You know, lucky for the HDB that I'm not eligible to buy a HDB because I am also in the ethnic minority. If I were in that ethnic minority and poor, I will make sure I get a group and we will sue the HDB for racial discrimination. So cut out this ethnic quota shit. Let people live with their parents with their children, with their relatives, so they form a village and support each other. Cause for preschool, Tamil, Malay language teachers. You know, Mr. Desmond Lee, I love you very much and I think you're doing good things, but let's cut out this racist policy. Some clown started this, speak mother tongue. My mother is Hokkien. What is Hiao Kong Hokkien way? I have a Cantonese mother too. Ngose Kong Kong Fu Wa. Saya boleh cakap bahasa. Ham Hindi bota he. You know why? I'm smart. I'm intelligent. I'm mixed breed. Let children learn at their own pace. Stop torturing children to study Chinese, which takes them hours and days and months, and they're struggling. You know, how many kids I meet hate to have to study Chinese. It's a difficult subject. You must be an artist because it is not a language that's easily teachable. So, cut out this mother tongue, father tongue, etc, etc. Please, let the children learn what they are good at, be it Chinese, Malay, Tamil, 
or French or German or whatever. Don't torture the kids. New mushroom species found in Singapore? I'm so happy. Actually, we should look at all the things that grow naturally, like wild boars, apple snails, monitor lizards, and even otters, and squirrels too. But Ho saying, I won't eat you. <laughs> Protect children from sex abuse by familiar adults, not just strangers. There's only one way to do it. Teach your kids to be a warrior. Kill those bastards. Kick them in the balls. Punch them in the face. Scratch their eyeballs out. Bite them. Come to me for lessons. Thank you for watching another episode of Coffee and Whiskey with Ivy. Please subscribe, it's free, you will, ju you will just get a reminder. And now, to use this on my wicked producer who did not bring me my curry bun. Kenneth, come here. <laughs>